Shadowrun is an RPG set in a dark and grim future, 2050 to be exact, and best of all, it was made right here in Melbourne. You play as Jake, who is gunned down and killed in the game's intro. Okay. Then, as your body's being put on ice in the morgue, you wake up and scare the besquinkies out of the morgue workers. <laughs> I will be honest and admit that I didn't really get very far into Shadowrun. I got a good feel for the game and it's not a very user friendly experience. You just dumped into this big world with no real guidance or direction, just lots of people who want to kill you. As you meet different characters you can ask them questions and the more you talk to people, the more topics you'll have to ask others about. Shadowrun has an interesting interface that starts off feeling weird, but soon becomes fairly intuitive. As you can probably see though, it really would have benefited from using the mouse, it's just screaming out to be a point and click game. Look, Shadowrun has some nice unique concepts, and the story is moderately intriguing, but after wandering around aimlessly with very little idea of what I was supposed to do, I decided that if I'm ever going to play this game properly, it will be when I can invest some serious time into it. And having a walkthrough probably wouldn't hurt either. It's certainly got potential, so I'll say it sits. Not only is Super Metroid one of the greatest games ever created, it was my 15th birthday present. Oh, one of the best presents I ever got. Um, there will be spoilers ahead, but seriously, if you haven't played Super Metroid yet, just go play it. When last we left bounty hunter Samus Aran, she had destroyed every last Metroid on planet SR388, except for one. She couldn't bring herself to kill the baby, so she took it to a science lab for testing. Just as she was jetting away though, she received a frantic distress signal. The lab was under attack by space pirates. So back she goes to find the lab destroyed, and everybody dead. She finally locates the baby, only to have it kidnapped by Ridley. Now I'm not sure what Ridley's deal is, he was well and truly destroyed in the first Metroid and there was a robotic version that Samus beat up in the Prime games, so how is he here? Perhaps this is son of Ridley, I have no idea. Anyway, he kidnaps the baby Metroid and takes it to Planet Zebus, the location of the first game. Now in the custody of the pirates, the Metroid will be duplicated and we'll be right back to where we started. Good one Samus, it's a pity she didn't kill the creature when she had the chance. Pity? It was pity that stayed Samus's hand. The pity of Samus Aran may rule the fate of many. So, Samus lands on Zebes, the planet that was once her home. Now it's just a desolate wasteland infected by pirates. She descends back into the depths and suddenly realises this is all very familiar. This is the tunnel I escaped from. This is where I fought the pirate's leader, Mother Brain. And this, this was where my Zero Mission first began. Hmm, didn't there used to be an energy tank hidden around here somewhere? Ah, there it is. It's not long before Samus comes across a mammoth golden statue, which seems to be guarding a very important path. And some of the faces on that statue seem familiar. Samus searches around the area and soon finds herself going deeper underground to the dense, rocky Brinstar region and the hot, scorching Norfair. With the high jump boots, she leaps into the first mini boss's lair, Kraid. Finding Kraid, she destroys him like last time at. Hmm, that was surprisingly easy. Wait, what's back here? Whoa, Kraid's been taking steroids! Could I just mention that the boss battles in this game are brilliantly epic. With Kraid dealt with and the Varia suit equipped, Samus continues to explore Norfair. Now, this chick moves pretty darn fast for a video game character, but in Norfair she discovers the speed boots and... Whoa! Eat your heart out, Sonic! Fighting her way past more nasty, she finds a grappling hook which allows her to swing to otherwise unreachable places. It's very cool. And soon after that, she discovers an abandoned spaceship that's crashed onto the surface of Zebes. Only problem is, the power's out and the place is haunted. Samus soon finds herself face to eyeball with the vicious ghost Fantoon. 
With the power returned, she can track down the gravity suit, which means her movement is no longer hindered by water. Nice. The next logical place to go then, is the cavernous underwater maze of Meridia. There's a fairly huge shortcut to Meridia's boss, check this out. Just attach the gravel beam to the electrical current and zap! No more boss. There's only one more thing for Samus to do before heading to the pirate's hideout, and that is to defeat Ridley. In the extended story of Metroid, it's understood that Ridley was responsible for killing Samus' parents, so any battle with the Purple Dragon is a grudge match, and he doesn't go down easily. Returning to the Golden Statue, the path is opened and Samus descends to the new and rebuilt Turian Zone, where the Metroids are being cloned once again. As before, a quick ice beam and a few missiles is all it takes to get rid of them, but if one happens to grab you, look out, it'll suck your energy. Then, things start to get strange. Samus finds an absolutely enormous Metroid. In fact, one might say it's a Super Metroid. And just as it's about to suck all the life out of her, it hears her scream out and stops. This gigantic creature is the baby she once rescued, and it still considers her its mother. How sweet. Fighting past the Metroid, Samus once again feels a sense of deja vu. Here is Mother Brain back from the dead, leading the pirates in their conquest. So Samus repeats history and sends that brain back into the abyss from whence it came. But what's this? The Mother Brain's had a few enhancements since last time. Just as Samus is about to be destroyed once and for all... Whoa! The baby's protecting its mama. Sucking all of the Mother Brain's energy out, it then transfers the energy to Samus before... The Mother Brain kills it. That's it. Payback time. With a new powered up hyper beam, Samus turns that brain into dust. Then the race is on. What's a Metroid game without an escape sequence, huh? Run, Samus, the planet's about to explode. And... Boom. Mission complete. Phew. You know what's most amazing about this game? Apart from the intro's narration, not a single word of dialogue is spoken to tell the story. The game relies completely on the player's intelligence and imagination to fill in the gaps and watch the story be told through actions, not words. And I've got to say, one thing Super Metroid does better than just about any other 16-bit game is atmosphere. The game created a sense of dread long before Resident Evil came into being, and with the help of the super moody music, Zebes is both a scary and exciting place to be. There's always something unexpected around the corner to surprise you, like when you find this Chozo statue, but it doesn't have the usual orb inside its claw. Hmm, curious. Let's see what happens if I do this. Whoa! I don't think it would be an exaggeration to say that just about every room in this game has a secret to be discovered. The game is chock full of them. You're given a little help in the second half of the game when Samus finds the X-ray scope, which can see through walls, to find the secrets. I can remember Super Metroid being released about the same time as Mega Man X, and there were a lot of comparisons, which isn't really fair since anyone who's played them both will tell you they're really different games. And Super Metroid's only ever had one real sequel, the excellent Metroid Fusion, which managed to be almost amazing as its predecessor. Of course, there's been other spin-offs as well, like the Metroid Prime games and Metroid Wah Wah Daddy issues. What do you mean? Like a link to the past, I swear I played this game about 20,000 times, so I know the map like the back of my hand. And while it doesn't pose a challenge like it once did, I still really enjoy journeying down to the depths of Zebes because it's just so well designed and plays like a dream. Yep, Super Metroid is one of those games that you can just lose yourself in, become completely immersed and forget about the real world around you. If this doesn't stand the test of time, nothing does.
Coming up in the next week, it's a double platform mascot whammy, dynamite heady, and earthworm Jim. Let's see if platform mascots are still relevant in the 21st century. See you then. PCS out to you.